what is the best DMR handheld radio, the best HT handy talkie handheld transceiver? What is the best DMR HT you can buy right now in 2021? We're going to talk about it coming up. Shut up and sit down. Thank you for joining today. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. On this channel titled Ham Radio 2.0, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of lots of things that are new in amateur radio. So today we're going to talk about the best DMR HT you can get right now. I'm going to take you through 10, 10 or 11. 11, I'll, I'll explain what I mean, mean by number 11 here in a minute. I'm going to take you through 10 of my choices for a great DMR HT from the bottom of the list to the top of the list and tell you about the features of each one, the options of each one. Which one you choose really kind of depends on features and price. So we're going to go through that right now. Stay tuned. Okay, we're going to start at the bottom. Like I said, we're going to start from the lowest price. We're going to go upwards to the highest priced one. And the highest priced ones, actually the highest priced one might not be the one that I recommend the most. So stay tuned and see what I have to say. If, uh, if that interests you. So Redivus makes an RT84 and Balfang makes a DM1701. For all intents and purposes, these are the same radio. Uh, the, the case is a little bit different on this Redivus right here. You can see the front of the case is just a, it's kind of a little bit, uh, there's a different looking part between the keypad and the screen. And it looks a little bit different right there than, than the, Bo, the Bofang, the Baofang version of it. But for all intents and purposes, they're the same. They're about the same size. The screens are the same. The screens are also the same as the MD380, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, they're dual band. They hold, uh, I, you know, I looked, I looked high and low. I couldn't really find many details about the Redivus model, but at Redivus.com, you can get this model for $68.39 right now, and it is in stock. I do not know what the shipping price is, but you can check that out. They're about $20 or $30 more than that on Amazon, and you can get free shipping if you have Prime. For the Bofang model, it is the DM1701. It is $99.98, $99.88 on Amazon right now, and it actually lists some specs that I think are very important to consider when purchasing radios it is dual band it has 3,000 channels 10,000 digital talk groups and 120,000 contacts now that will not hold the entire database we're right at the threshold of 200,000 contacts at the time of this recording in the DMR database worldwide you could probably load the database for the USA or maybe just uh, all the uh, several states in the USA or maybe just Canada or just your country if you live outside the United States so you'd have to pick and choose which contacts to load but it, it 120,000 is still a a good number it's more than half of the current database right now presumably this redivis will probably hold about the same thing but quite frankly these radios are so similar that if you're looking at one of these very low featured entry level radios get the one that you find for the best price i mean that that would be my suggestion so rather than either one of those two for for about the same amount of money you can get the TYT MD UV380. Make sure you get the UV380 and not the MD380. The MD380 is a mono band that comes in either UHF or VHF, but it's not both. The UV380 is both UHF, VHF, and it is dual band. The great thing about the MD UV380 is it's been around a while. The MD380 was a very, very popular radio for a long time, and it was easy to transport the code plug from the 380 monoband to the UV380 dual band. So there's a lot of code plugs out there floating around for the UV380. Most likely, if you know someone in a local area to you or a local ham radio club and they have a DMR radio, you're probably going to be able to find a UV380 code plug easier than some of these other code plugs, which will just shoot right into the radio and you just change your uh, your DMR ID from there, from whoever you got the code plug from to your own ID and go from there and it, it will be easy to get. But for 109 at buy two way radios right now, this is a really solid choice for an entry level DMR radio. The next one I'll talk about is the Aliens, or however you say that, the HD1 DMR radio. This was the very first radio that ever came out that had a true VFO in DMR mode. Most of these radios will have, uh, well, all of these radios we're talking about today also do analog. And most of them, 
that would have a VFO or in the early days, some of them would have a VFO in analog, but not in DMR. And you had to do everything in DMR via code plug. This one right here, you can punch everything in from the keypad and never have to actually install the software. It was one of the first radios to do that. It would be very cumbersome and time consuming to punch in all the different channels that you want to punch in by doing them all by hand. So I still recommend the software and the programming cable for these, but this HD1 is a great radio for $179 on Amazon right now and get free shipping. Holds 200,000 contacts, so it'll hold right at where the database sits today. 3,200 milliamp hour battery, 3,000 channels, and it is IP67 rated for durability right now as well. So these have been around a long time. They've got, a, they had a couple of firmware updates early on, but ever since then, they've got, they've been really solid and I know people that still use them and they're still happy with them. They're a little bit larger than the MD380 and UV380 series of radios. The screen is a little bit bigger. So you're going to get a little bit better looking HT, a little bit better, uh, easier to carry HT. But I would recommend this one for anybody who wants to pick up something that is a little bit more feature packed than the UV380. Moving on to the next one, I was also disappointed to see that everyone is out of stock with this Alenco DJ MD5 TGP, which is a part 90 type accepted, part 90 certified. So in other words, it'll work on commercial band. It's open up full transmit and it'll work on DMR and amateur band for both DMR and analog. And this radio has not been discontinued, at least not that I've heard. The reason for this lack of stock right now is just because of the chip shortage that's going on in so many radios right now. I checked at the websites for DX Engineering. I checked at the websites for, I think it was uh, by 2 way radios also, and Gigaparts, as you can see right here. And even on Amazon, all of them show out of stock. But as far as I know, the radio has not been discontinued. This was my 11th one. This is a great HT. It's This is the newly updated version. I've actually got one right there. I haven't done a review video on it yet because nobody has them in stock. But I wanted to mention it in my top uh, best HTs of 2021 because if you can find one of these, when they come back in stock, if you see one selling one on used on QRZ or eBay something, this is a great HT. It's very similar to the Anytone radios, which we're going to talk about here in a second. A little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. And a lot of your mainstream ham radio vendors sell them because they are made by Linko. So you can get one of these from maybe HRO or MTC or D DX Engineering in these places. And then if you have issues with it or questions with it, you can always reach out to your local ham radio store instead of having to email someone overseas. Also very similar to the Alenco is the BTEC DMR 6x2. Now, when this radio came out, it was really unique because it incorporated a different level of GPS than the original Anytone had. It also came with two separate batteries. It came with an extended battery, but it came with like a, a regular sized battery also. So you got two batteries with it. You could keep one on the charger while we're using one in the radio and switch them out when, when the one on the radio died. In fact, it still uh, includes full kit with two batteries, programming cable, and more. And Baofeng Tech is a company out of South Dakota uh, that are that they take Chinese radios and they update them and they transvert them, they transform them, and they they upgrade them and they they fix them up and they sell them locally. So if you ever need support for anything made by Baofeng Tech or B Tech, you can call somewhere inside the United States and get that support. This right here, in fact, you won't find a radio like this with the name Baofeng on it. This is a B-Tech radio. It's one of their models that they offer themselves out of Baofeng Tech in the USA, but you can't actually find a Baofeng Chinese-made version of this radio. Again, they're made in China, but they're distributed in the USA. That's probably a better way to say it. So you can't find actual Baofeng. The Chinese company Baofeng does not make this model. This model is unique to B-Tech, and they are in the USA, as I said, and it's a great radio. I think the last count it held about, according to the, <clears throat> according to the information down here on the Amazon website, they hold... 4,000 channels, so a little bit, a few more channels than the last couple models we talked about. 10,000 talk groups and 200,000 contacts. So again, we're right at the threshold of filling up the 200,000 contacts worldwide database at radioid.net right now. But if you wanted to just load all the contacts from your own country into the DMR radio, it would hold that. And then maybe you could upgrade later. There might even be a firmware update for this later that expands its contact capability. But that's one of the things I always like to look at is how many contacts will the radio hold and then kind of decide from there how future-proof you want the radio to be. 
This brings us to the next set of radios, which is four radios in a row. And I'm going to recommend these are my favorite radios personally, um, with the exception of maybe one that I'll talk about here in a minute. The any tone line of radios, they started with the 868 and then they went to an 878 UV. All of these are dual band. So they had an 868 and then they released an 878 UV and then an 878 UV plus. And now they've got the 878 UV two plus. Okay, so the D868, the original one, is limited to 120, 150,000 contacts, somewhere in there. It's very similar to the DMR, uh, the BTEC 6x2, although the 6x2, I think, has been upgraded firmware more recently than the, 87, uh, the 868 has. So this is an older radio. This is one of Anytone's first radios. They're still making updates. Well, there's newly updated firmware for it, but I'm not sure how long it's going to be much more in, in production because of this, these new radios that have come out. They did the 878 as an update to the 868, and they expanded the number of contacts and number of channels. Uh, the 878 will hold 200,000 contacts, and shortly after the 878 came out, the 878 Plus came out, and the Plus incorporates APRS and GPS and Bluetooth into the same radio. So the 878 and 878 Plus are basically the same radio, except the Plus model has APRS transmit only and Bluetooth, where you can uh, hook the radio into your car stereo and hear it through your car speakers. You can hook it into a headset. The little PTT button that you see right here is a button that has a, a Velcro strap around it. You can put it around your finger or you can put it around your steering wheel and you can use it to key the radio via Bluetooth to PTT. And it is a good feature for that. So that's obviously a little bit higher in price than the first one. The newest, latest and greatest, and this one just came out not too long ago at all, and it is the most expensive of the three, but it incorporates so much more stuff. This radio will hold 500,000 contacts in its digital database. So it is way future proof. It'll hold more than twice of the worldwide, the current worldwide database right now. So it'll be viable for years and years to come. It incorporates APRS both transmit and receive. So you can receive signals from other APR stations and it'll transmit via APRS on analog and digital. So you can use regular I gates and digipeters that are already up in the world today to share your information, send text messages, et cetera, et cetera. More videos I have coming on that later. I've got a code plug video that's about to release for this radio. I've got my uh, APR, I've got a how to how to set up AP, APRS, which is about to release for this radio. This is my current everyday carry radio. When I leave the house and take my backpack with me, which has my laptop and several other things in it, this is the radio that's in the side uh, side pouch of my backpack that I take with me most everywhere. This one and one of the uh, one of the ocean radios are my two daily carries that I pretty much take everywhere. I use the Anytone for both analog and DMR, and then I use the Ocean Radio for pretty much just analog. I really, really like this UV+. Plus. It is a little bit more expensive than some of the radios out there, but as as a commenter said on one of my videos, he's like, you know, that $299, that's getting into the, uh, the Yezu FT3D territory. It's getting into the Japanese price range territory and he wasn't sure if the any tone radio was worth that and my response to him was basically that you know any tone has filled a void that the big three or the big four have been unwilling to fill okay any tone listen to the amateur radio community in the usa and they made a radio that we wanted they made a dual band dmr radio with ap with true analog aprs send and receive true bluetooth a huge database a lot of channels a big battery and it's just an, a really loud speaker, a long battery life because of the big battery, and just all of this different features. And I'm like, you know, Icom, Kenwood, Yezu, Alenko, they could have done this and they chose not to. For whatever reason, I don't know. I don't know. But any tone has filled a void that we would not have otherwise. So I say let them charge $299 because in my opinion, this is one of the best HTs that I own in my arsenal right now. I really like this radio. If I had to pick one radio out of the entire lineup today, it would be this one or perhaps one other that I'm going to talk about here in a second. I feel like I have to mention the Motorola radios because realistically, realistically, the Motorola radios are commercial grade. They're made for extreme environments, hot and cold. They have gone through a lot of research and de development R&D. And quite frankly, you're not going to find a better radio than a Motorola, whatever the model is. Okay. So they make an XPR 6550, which is a um, UHF only 
and I think it comes in VHF also. They make an XPR 7550, which is this one that you see right here. The E model incorporates Wi-Fi and maybe a couple of other features. Uh, Bluetooth 4.0, it says. Uh, they are monoband radios, and they are several hundred dollars. Depending on where you go, you might be able to find one of these used on eBay for five or 600 bucks. I think brand new, they're north of $1,000. Uh, again, they're a commercial radio. They are not marketed to the amateur radio community, but if you ever find one at a ham fest or used somewhere on QRZ or whatever, and you're able to pick it up, you will find, you'll find out where that money went. That money goes to the research and development and just the awesome sounding radio, long battery life, and excellent receiver. So the Motorola line of radios, which are not made for or targeted to the amateur radio community, can still be a viable option if you like. There's a lot of diehard Motorola guys out there, and I understand where they're coming from because I've I've got I don't have the E model, but I got one of the older 7550 models. It's a fantastic radio. It had Bluetooth long before anything else that that has Bluetooth. Long before the D74, long before the Anytone, long before uh, the IC705 was out. It had Bluetooth, so I was using a headset in my deer stand and putting the radio up on the the side of the post of the deer stand, and I was using the PTT on the headset. Actually, I'd reach over and hit the PTT on the on the radio because the headset didn't have a PTT and I would talk into the headset and we would communicate with one another via um, via radio frequencies. Uh, there's two or three guys on my dear lease who are hams and uh, we've used FRS as well with other FRS radios, but I would communicate that way. And even local repeaters, I would talk to the local repeaters when it was a slow hunting season. So they've incorporated Bluetooth for a long time. You're really not going to find a better quality radio than the Motorola, but you're going to have to pay for it as well. So it's a choice. Would I recommend it? Yes. To a new ham? No, probably go with one of the ones we've talked about before. This is going to be a little bit more money. You're going to have to pay for the software. It's going to be a lot more cumbersome to program, but it's definitely worth mentioning for those of you out there who are really into DMR, that really like the quality of DMR and want the best quality of radio you can get. Motorola is going to be one of your top choices. For the last and final and top of the line, quite frankly, and let me explain what I mean by that. Now this, the R Finder B1, I've done a lot of videos on the R Finder products. Uh, this is the fourth generation of handheld radio that R Finder has released. They started with an H1 and then they had an M1 and then a K1 and this is the B1. This is the first one that is dual band. This is a dual band radio built into the back of a fully functional Android smartphone. It runs Android 8.1 it will do everything your current Android phone will do. You'll be able to download apps from the Play Store, be able to use a web browser, check your email, receive, make and receive phone calls. It's got a Bluetooth headset to use the phone with. It's got a, pretty much all the features that your regular Android phone would have. Plus, it has a dual band DMR and analog radio built into the back of it that's totally controlled from an app on your phone. No more code plugs, no more programming, no more computer cables to plug into your computer in order to change a frequency or change channels or rename something. Everything is done from the PTT screen, from the app screen uh, called R Finder. And you can type in your own repeater, type in your own simplex frequency, use the GPS in the phone to find which rep repeaters are near you program them into the radio with one touch. Now they have a new DMR ROIP technology that is just about to be released. It's been in beta for a long time, and I've actually used it. It works quite well. But this is basically a hotspot that's built into the back of the radio so that you don't even need a hotspot. Now you can turn the radio on and talk directly into the internet, into the Brandmeister network, and they're working on other network connections as well, without the use of a hotspot. So no longer having to carry a hotspot around, it'll talk directly to Brandmeister. You can turn the DM, DMR ROIP feature off and talk in regular analog repeaters, dual band. You can talk in regular DMR repeaters or other DMR hotspots with dual band. It's a very fully functional, multi-purpose radio. I hesitate to call it a radio because it's a fully functioning Android device with a radio built into it. So the $999 price tag puts a lot of people off. They're like, well, that's too much to pay for an HT. Well, number one, the Motorola that we just showed you is probably a little bit more expensive and has less features than this does. And number two, this is not an HT. This is a fully functional Android device 
with an HT built into the back of it. If you were to go down to the AT&T or Verizon or T-Mobile store right now and buy a brand new smartphone with no contract, they're going to be north of $1,000. Most of them are. Your, your new Samsungs, your new HTC phones are going to be north of $1,000 with no contract. There's no bloatware on this uh, device. There's no proprietary Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T firmware or apps that you can't uninstall on this device. It is a world phone, so it will take two SIM cards and it will work overseas in Europe and Asia and Australia. It's multi-functional, multi-network, uh, multi-everything. <laughs> so it is just, it's really the pinnacle of DMR radios that's out there right now simply because it offers features that nobody else has. It's not going to be in everyone's price range, and I understand that. So that's kind of why today I was I was saying that the the eight seven eight UV two plus is really kind of my top choice, but I've got the R Finder as well, and the R Finder does things that the UV that the AnyTone won't do, but it's three times the price of the AnyTone as well. So depending on what your price range is, the AnyTone or the R Finder are both going to be an excellent value for you. They're going to give you a lot more features than anything else we've listed in this in this video today. But if you're sold on one of these other HTs, these are the ones that I currently recommend for 2021. Hey guys, let me know what you think about the list below. Let me know what you think about these 11 HTs, 11 including the Elenco that's not available right now and the Motorola that most of you are probably not going to want, but I felt a need to mention and the R Finder device, which is an HT with many, many other options in it. It's not just an HT. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've got any of these radios. Put your comments below. Thank you very much for watching today. I would be interested to hear which radio you like the best in 2021. Which one do you carry? What's your everyday carry? And tell me why you like it. 73 and we'll catch you next time.